everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that has a host who still has a cold, but hey, I'm very excited for Alan Wake too. As you can tell, we're gonna try and play it all day tomorrow. I'm gonna rest up. Hopefully my nasal congestion will be gone and we can jump in because I am ready to have my mind blown. But today in the news, it's hard to believe that as of this October, Fallout 76 will be celebrating its five year anniversary. It's quinquennial? And that's led many people to reflect on Bethesda's most ambitious game to date and all the things that went wrong. In an interview with MinMax, designer Bruce Nesmith, who has since left Bethesda, shared his thoughts on Fallout 76's development, rocky release, and frankly, the hubris behind it all. Nesmith said Bethesda higher ups would ask Howard to add multiplayer to its games every year, and every year Howard would tell them that's a bad idea. Eventually though, the pressure from players to add multiplayer was so high that Todd wanted to do it too, Nesmith said. The idea then became to make a Fallout game and all we have to do is add multiplayer. And as we all know, it's never that simple. Adding multiplayer to a single player game is vastly different than creating a multiplayer game. For the most part, Bethesda's Fallout games thrive on their single player first person narrative adventures through a hilarious yet haunting post-apocalyptic US filled with giant cockroaches, giant mutants, and the occasional giant robot. There's a reason why your character's called the sole survivor or the lone wanderer. It's about individual personalized experience. According to Nesmith, that pressure from higher ups and fans on top of Bethesda's string of successes created the perfect irradiated storm. We had so many, not just successes, but literal games of the years, industry-wide accepted games of the years, not just in our own heads or in these little magazines over there, he added, but everybody is saying this is the game of the year. We started to talk ourselves into the fact that we were infallible. There was nothing we couldn't do. Clearly, that was wrong. What's especially interesting to me about that is how it all sounds very similar to everyone over at Bioware and the vibe they had before they had a string of failures. And like Icarus, Bethesda flew too close to that 16 times the detail sun. The combination of disastrous launch, lack of rich in-game content and some pre-order shenanigans helped solidify Fallout 76 as one of the most disappointing launches of the last decade, if not the worst release for Bethesda Softworks. And sure, after five years of patches and expansions and dedication on behalf of the Bethesda team, it is in a better place, but the player base just isn't really there. If anything, Fallout 76 should serve as a reminder to Bethesda and any other game company what happens when you fall victim to plain old hubris, which is ironically the name of a comic book company in the Fallout universe, so go figure. In other news, yesterday's Xbox Partner Preview Showcase featured a bunch of different games, showing off a bunch of cool stuff, but one of the things that stood out was the Yakuza Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth trailer because it showed off some gameplay of something called Dondoko Island, a location where players can visit in game. After a dramatic intro, the VO states, welcome to your vacation within a vacation where a cozy do-it-yourself lifestyle awaits. So I'm sure you can only guess what is about to follow. That's right, it's pretty much the Yakuza parody of Animal Crossing New Horizons, all the way down to the gameplay itself. Players will be able to explore, buy furniture, or even craft it themselves. And it's it's not just your home you can decorate. Much like in Animal Crossing, you'll be able to customize the entire island. But of course, in typical Yakuza fashion, you'll have to beat up and take down any aggressive, unwanted island guests that are trying to ruin your vacation time. And believe it or not, everything shown in the trailer isn't DLC. It's all part of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth's base game. Speaking to Xbox.com, RGG Studio Chief Producer Hiroyuki Sakamoto revealed that Dundoko Island will be unlocked partway through the campaign and is independent of the main story. And if you've played any Yakuza game, you know that all the mini games, all the little random things you can do are half the fun. It's why people love this franchise so much. And here is another great example of that. They took a whole other game and just threw it in this one and it's like, have fun, amazing. Amazing. Anyway, that's it for the news. Reminder, tomorrow over on the old Twitch box, I'll be streaming Alan Wake 2 all day, we're gonna start with the official unboxing of the final box for the ARG, and then we'll jump into the game. Please tune in, I would love it if you would, and I'll see y'all tomorrow here for another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News.